Hi everyone, this is Janet Simmons, and in this video we'll look at some recent workplace learning trends. We will begin with a look at modern workplace learning, look at how the Alpha Tame Group trains its employees, and we'll also look at how North American companies tend to train their employees. From there we'll look at the future of workplace learning and then wrap up with a few synthesis questions. Jane Hart sees modern professional learning as occurring in three different ways, partially organized by management, partially organized by learning and development, and partially self-organized by the employee. Jane Hart goes on to say, in the modern workplace, L&D now have a tripartite role, not just organizing things for people to learn from, such as courses and resources. It means supporting all the other ways people learn for and at work. This means supporting manager-led learning and empowering employee-led learning. Changes in employee learning are evident in the Dubai-based conglomerate, the Alpha Tame Group. The company has over 44,000 employees with over 100 nationalities making up its workforce. Its four main sectors are automotive, financial, services, real estate, and retail operating in 35 countries. The diverse business lines have a global reach and creating different learning content is problematic for the employee learning and development. According to the World Economic Forum, the Alpha Tame Group approaches corporate training based on a 70-20-10 ratio. 70% of the learning and development happens on the job, 20% occurs through coaching and mentoring, and only 10% occurs in the classroom. The company uses a blended learning model featuring on-demand courses and collaborative learning opportunities. Clearly, this costs a great deal of money, but this is of little concern to the Alpha Tame Group because they have reduced costs by reducing the need for trainers, material, and facility space. Jane Hart is based in England, and the Alpha Tame Group primarily operates in the Middle East, North Africa, and Southeast Asia. LinkedIn provides us with a North American perspective and clearly illustrates the different attitudes toward workplace learning and illustrates some problems with L&D. 78% of training is in-house instructor-led and 61% involves coaching, which is in contrast to the 70-20-10 model. This is compounded by small budgets and getting employees to make time for L&D. Therefore, it shouldn't be a big surprise to find that less than 25% of L&D professionals do not recommend their organization's programs to peers. Additionally, only 60% of L&D professionals have the opportunity to make a difference and influence company owners or executives. How can they affect change if they aren't sitting at the table with decision makers? According to Goldenberg, we will need to invest more in developing the skills of our existing workforce and those of older workers. We will need to do everything we can to increase the skills of older workers, unemployed and underemployed, and disadvantaged groups and bring them into the labor force. We will need to bring in more skilled immigrants and do a better job of recognizing their credentials. Finally, there's solid evidence that higher education and skill levels lead to greater productivity, increased capacity for innovation, firm success, economic growth, and improved employment and earnings for workers. So what does the future of learning look like? This graphic looks at learning holistically. Although it is unfortunate that a timeline is not included, some of these are already happening. For example, I believe that the continuous career readiness is already the norm. And we work and live with a wide range of digital networks where we can access knowledge. You may wish to pause the video and take a minute to read through this graphic and discover for yourself if we're on the cusp of many of the trends. This graphic by Learn Labs is much simpler. It brings together three elements, human, digital, and pedagogy. This learning organization believes the future of learning encompasses all three elements. I tend to agree because if you remove any one element, then the learning will not resonate with the learner. Also, if you think about it, this graphic is really depicting how to make information and knowledge stick in our brains. There are two synthesis questions for this video. Think of some of the current trends in workplace learning or learning in general. Which ones do you think will eventually be widely adopted? And what trends do you envision in the future? Trends can be difficult to spot, so it's up to you as a teaching expert to be able to identify trends and perhaps test them for yourself. 
Remember, you don't always have to follow a trend, and sometimes it's better not to jump on the trend bandwagon. But being part of the leading edge of a trend can make for innovative and engaging learning. See you in the next video.